The objectives of this screencast are as follows. Explain how the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions can have cooperative effects on a target organ, and include examples. Explain how the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions can have antagonistic effects on a target organ, and include examples. And lastly, describe sympathetic control of blood flow through blood vessels. Most of our visceral organs receive nerve fibers from both the sympathetic as well as the parasympathetic divisions. In other words, they have what we refer to as dual innervation. However, these subsystems can have antagonistic or cooperative effects. Usually they are antagonistic, but sometimes they have cooperative effects. Let's look at the antagonistic effects, because they are the most prevalent. If they have antagonistic effects, that means that they have opposite effects. For example, with respect to the digestive system, the parasympathetic nervous system speeds up digestion, the sympathetic slows it down. With respect to the heart, the parasympathetic slows heart rate, the sympathetic increases heart rate, and it also causes the heart to beat more vigorously or harder with more force. There are two main ways by which these subsystems can have opposite effects. One is they innervate the same effector cells, but they secrete different neurotransmitters. For example, with cardiac muscles, both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers synapse with the same cardiac muscle cells. However, the parasympathetic nerve fibers are cholinergic. They release acetylcholine, and that causes a decrease in contraction of cardiac muscles. The sympathetic nervous system secretes norepinephrine, which causes an increase in the rate of contraction. So here they're innervating the same effector cells, but they're secreting different neurotransmitters, and that's why they have different effects. However, sometimes they have different effects because they innervate different effector cells of the same organ. For example, that is what occurs in the pupils. So let's examine how the sympathetic and parasympathetic subsystems have antagonistic effects on an organ by innervating two totally different cells. So your pupil, of course, is surrounded by the iris. The iris contains smooth muscles, and it's the contraction of these smooth muscles that determines pupil size. Parasympathetic fibers, shown here in blue, innervate pupillary constrictor cells. These are smooth muscle cells that when they contract, they cause the pupil to get smaller or constrict. So when the sympathetic fibers release acetylcholine, it causes these pupillary constrictors to contract, and the pupil is constricted. Sympathetic fibers shown here in yellow, they innervate a totally different type of smooth muscle cell. They innervate pupillary dilator cells also found in the iris. When they release noradrenaline, it causes these cells to contract and thus they cause the pupil to dilate. So here we have a situation where we have antagonistic effects of the sympathetic and parasympathetic subsystems because they innervate and stimulate two totally different cells which have two totally different effects on the organ. Although we often think of the two subsystems as having opposite effects, there are situations where they actually work cooperatively to produce an effect. An example of that would be in the production of saliva. So saliva is a solution that is produced by the salivary glands and it contains multiple components. Well, the parasympathetic nervous system or subsystem increases the production of water, and enzyme-rich 
secretions by serous cells that contribute to the saliva. The sympathetic nervous system increases the production of mucus, which is contained in the saliva. So the two subsystems work together or cooperatively in the production of saliva. So this is an example of the cooperative effects of the two subsystems. As we talk about the effects of the two subsystems, we should also note that all organs are not innervated equally by both subsystems. Some organs are primarily innervated by the parasympathetic, and more commonly, some are uh, predominantly innervated by the sympathetic. And there are some that are only innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. Some examples of those would be the adrenal medulla. It's only innervated by the sympathetic division. The piloerector muscles that are responsible for uh, your little hairs on your skin standing on end. Sweat glands and most blood vessels are only under the control of the sympathetic division, not the parasympathetic. So an obvious question may be, how do you have an increase and a decrease in activity of an organ if only one subsystem controls that organ. Well, quite simply, um, you can have a change in the activity of that organ by increasing or decreasing the activity of that one subsystem. And for an example, I want to illustrate how the sympathetic nervous system controls most blood vessels because most blood vessels are only innervated by the sympathetic nervous system. So first, please understand that there is always a certain level of what is called vasomotor tone. As long as you are, are alive, the sympathetic nervous system is always, to a certain extent, stimulating smooth muscles in the walls of blood vessels to contract. If that were not the case, blood pressure would drop so low that you would go into shock and die. So there's a certain level of vasomotor tone that's due to the sympathetic nervous system sending action potentials to smooth muscles in the walls of blood vessels. If, for whatever reason, there is a desire to decrease the flow of blood to an organ, then the sympathetic nervous system can increase the rate at which action potentials are sent to those smooth muscles. That would cause those smooth muscles to contract more and decrease the size of the lumen of the blood vessel or cause vasoconstriction. This would, one, increase blood pressure and two, decrease the blood flow through that blood vessel. On the other hand, if there was a desire to decrease blood pressure or to increase blood flow to an organ, then there could be a decrease in the rate at which action potentials were sent down those sympathetic fibers. That would cause the smooth muscles to relax. They'd still be contracting, but not contracting as much. And you would get vasodilation of those blood vessels. So you can get modulation or changes in the, in the activity of an organ, even though only one subsystem is controlling that organ. This discussion about how the sympathetic nervous system controls the size of blood vessels and therefore the flow of blood through the body reinforces the whole notion of how the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems work by ensuring that blood flow blood flows preferentially to organs of the body depending on what the needs of the body are at that given time. For example, during times of stress or when you are exercising where there is a elevated level of activity, high priority for blood flow is given to your skeletal muscles and your heart. Organs such as your digestive tract, your urinary tract, and your reproductive 
organs are seen as less essential at that time. On the flip side, when you are relaxing, say you're uh, laying down on the couch, looking at TV, there's very little blood flow to your skeletal muscles. They're, all they're doing is just maintaining body temperature for the most part, uh, but they're not actively involved in locomotion. So there's very little blood flow to skeletal muscles. Uh, at that time, there is increased blood flow to the digestive system, the urinary system, and the reproductive systems. There's simply not enough blood to supply all organs equally, so it is necessary sometimes to make sure blood flows preferentially to skeletal muscles of the body. So to summarize, the objectives of this screencast were as follows. Explain how the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions can have cooperative effects on a target organ and include examples. Explain how the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions can have antagonistic effects on a target organ and include examples. Describe sympathetic control of blood flow through blood vessels.